Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and these are my top 50 favorite animated films of all time. Now, this is part four in our countdown series. So before we head into the top 20, make sure to check out the other three videos in the series to see what has already made the list. Now, just a quick reminder, this is just my own personal favorite 50 animated films of all time. No other criteria were taken into account other than my own personal opinion. And I cannot wait to talk about amazing animated films with you down in the comment section below. So keep it cute down there and let's go ahead and discuss animation. Now, before we head into our top 20, here are some more amazing animated films that just barely missed the countdown. With so many stellar animated films released throughout history, it was impossible for me to narrow this down to just 50. Thus, we have honorable mentions to get to so I can show love to as many animated films as I can. Shrek reinvented what DreamWorks would become as a studio for the 2000s with wonderful animation, a hilarious take on the classic fairy tale storyline. Shrek delivers pop culture galore in this inventive, fun, and funny DreamWorks classic. The Secret Life of Kells is a beautiful, small, and quaint animated film that wonderfully envelops the viewer in into the Celtic culture with a heartfelt story and stunning 2D animation. This is certainly not one to be missed. Frank and Weenie is Tim Burton at his finest with one of his best offerings post the year 2000. With a heartfelt expansion on his short film, Frank and Weenie is a wonderful tale about feeling like an outsider and gaining a friendship from an unexpected place. Now maybe it's just the dog lover in me, but I have a big soft spot for this Tim Burton film. Now, let's go ahead and get back into this countdown. Here is number 20. So at number 20, I have Zootopia. One of the most recent Walt Disney Picture animated films to win the Oscar for Best Animation, Zootopia is a true modern day classic for the studio. As always, when it comes to Disney, the animation is top notch. But what really makes this film special, particularly with Zootopia, the world building and how they brought these different lands and boroughs within the Zootopia is wonderful. I just relished in visiting each and every place and seeing how they were able to incorporate natural environments into the metropolis type of atmosphere. And I think they more than succeeded across the board. Plus, the allegories to racism and discrimination are beautifully handled in a way that adults can appreciate and also learn from, but that speaks to children and really helps them to understand. Beauty Hops is such a wonderful character who is a beacon of persevering and following your dreams. And really, the character development between her and Nick Wilde is stellar. Their chemistry is beautiful, and this buddy cop energy works to wonderful effect here. The surprise villain also works really well when it comes to Zootopia. It's time to blast, a lot of adventure, and a whole lot of heart. So I think it more than deserves the acclaim it has received. At number 19, I have Chicken Run. Yes, this Aardman classic is a classic for a reason. First of all, Aardman just killed it as they always do when it comes to that stop motion animation. The character designs though are hilarious and just add to the extra oomph in the comedic performance that is Chicken Run. Our vocal cast is wonderful regardless of what they may or may not have done outside of the film. The voices beautifully bring these quirky, fun characters to life. The storytelling is immensely inventive. Obviously, we have these chickens. 
<laughs> like in this coop trying to get on out of there and it works so well they are so fun and funny the hijinks work really well and they build up off of chicken escape premise beautifully to create not only an adventurous story but really build up the jokes off of the premise alone easily ardman's funniest film and for my money still Ardman's best effort to the silver screen to date. Coming in at number 18, I have Monsters, Inc. This Pixar classic is still one of their best. I just adore Monsters, Inc. Now watching it from a 2020 rewatch perspective, yes, the animation certainly has aged at this point as happens with 3D animation, and honestly, what makes 2D animation just that much more special. But the textures and the fluidity just isn't quite up to modern day Pixar standards, but what do you expect? It's nearly 20 years later. But that can all be pushed to the side because everything else is pretty much perfect when it comes to Monsters, Inc. Sully and Mike Wazowski are amazing lead characters who are both hilarious and come on these wonderful journeys, particularly Mike, throughout the film with Boo, who is amazing. Boo is certainly one of the cutest things to come out of Pixar. She is adorable, she is heartfelt, and is completely endearing to the audience to the point where you are 100% invested and hooked on the story being told. But our villains are wonderful. Obviously, Randall, voiced by Steve Buscemi, is amazing in this film. We have Jennifer Tilly. The vocal cast across the board is stellar. But the concept is so inventive, and the world building within this monster universe is amazing. The character designs are wonderful, and the story makes great use out of all of that. It delivers on the monster premises, it delivers on those laughs, and it's so much heart and cuteness that it's impossible not to love Monsters, Inc. At number 17, I have Princess Mononoke. Yes, from fame, the Studio Ghibli, Princess Mononoke is one of their most sophisticated and darkest films of the catalog. I've mentioned it several times before in my countdown, and I'm certainly going to mention it again, but a good, solid environmental message certainly puts you off on the right foot in my book, and Princess Mononoke definitely starts us off on the right foot. But what I love within this film is the gray area. Everybody in this movie sits and resides in that gray area area. Nobody is fully right. Nobody is fully wrong. And you can understand the merit to even our worst villains in the film. And the namesake herself has a lot of faults within how she chooses to interact and deal with her problems. The animation obviously is stunning. This is certainly one of the gorier of the Ghibli films. Lots of action takes place, but it's all really well placed and never feels gratuitous. These ideas of the spirit animals just continue to evolve how Studio Ghibli handles the mythology of Japanese culture and how they are ever evolving with the spirits and the demons, if you will, and how they work to fit each film and the story they're telling. Obviously, the animals I loved in the movie and then that final climax is some of the most exciting yet heartbreaking and intense and suspenseful of Ghibli's catalog. Princess Mononoke delivers its message, delivers the environmental aspects without ever condemning or feeling one-sided, while still providing an intense story that is satisfying and all of that coupled with beautiful animation. It is certainly one of the studio's best efforts. <laughs> At number 16, I have The Iron Giant. Oh, what a film. What a beautiful animated film that deserves so much better upon its initial release. The Iron Giant is a story we have seen done several times of this alien, this creature, this 
thing gentle giant who looks like some sort of monster but in reality it's a beautiful sentient creature human finds them and protects them basically <laughs> a friendship and bond is formed and we work toward preserving the beauty of the unknown and, and misunderstood and the iron giant takes this formula and executes it pretty much to perfection the vocal work in this film is stellar. Everybody, Harry Connick Jr. is wonderful. All of our cast, honestly, is stellar. Vin Diesel as the Iron Giant is fantastic. The animation is beautiful. It is fun. It has its quirks, and it fully fits the atmosphere and tone that the film has set up. I really enjoyed that we got this alien metal robotic giant. <laughs> <laughs> instead of just kind of a pure animal that we usually receive in these type of films because it did add a new different dynamic and of course probably most importantly the bond between our iron giant and hogarth our main human protagonist is wonderful they take time to fully develop this bond throughout the entirety of the film so that when we get moments like that superman moment at the end oh I mean, your heart is in pieces. And how can it not be? Because they've done such a great job building to that point. My only nitpick with the film is that the villain is over the top. He's a bit too much. And that's really the only detractor when it comes to the Iron Giant for me personally. Otherwise, I think the film has some great messaging, beautiful animation, and it really grabs those hard strings. <laughs> Coming in at 15, I have Wally. Well, here we are, yet again, another animated film with an environmental undertone. Wally provides Pixar's main foray into the environmental arena, and they do it in absolutely stunning fashion. Who would have thought that a movie about a romance between two robots could be this charming and this heartfelt? First of all, Wally as a character is one of my favorite Pixar characters. How do you not love this earnest, adorable little robot? As he is just roaming around Earth, doing his work, making friends with cockroaches, and admiring old Hollywood classics, I fell in love with Wally instantly, and the love only grew as we moved throughout the film. Eve is also just so adorable and so amazing, and their connection is really special. And that's a big part of what makes Wally so special, is that yes, the overall movie is about Earth and preserving Earth and keeping it to a point where we can still live on Earth and being active. However, maybe more importantly, the film is actually a romance between Wally and Eve. And those two elements play together and pair perfectly to make this beautiful blend of a film. The score is absolutely wonderful. The visuals are still stunning to this day. The story is impeccably executed. The hijinks maybe don't have big laugh out loud properties, but they are quite adorable. These big old blobs of humans actually provide some of the biggest surprises and heartwarming moments as they show the actual strength of humankind. It's honestly just such a wonderful film across the board. I love Wally. Coming in at number 14, I have Kubo and the Two Strings. Leica has never been a studio to shy away from pushing the envelope, from making daring films that have a lot to say. And I think Kubo is the pinnacle of what this studio has stood for. It is a more somber, mature film about dealing with grief, about overcoming that, and familial bonds, all while providing a beautiful and epic adventure. I would say the animation in Kubo and the Two Strings is the best that Laika has brought to the screen to date. The fantastical elements are impeccably brought to life. The facial expressions and the animals, as well as Kubo and the other humans, is amazing. Plus, 
It brings in that horror element that the studio has become so linked to. and mixes it with this folklore and the action that we love. Plus the storytelling in that script is top tier. That's another one that really builds up to a huge character moment in the third act. And when we get there and we get to that realization and growth with Kubo, it is more than earned and feels like the proper progression for the character. It's completely satisfying, though, like a dares to give us a bittersweet ending after that. And I think for all of those reasons, Kubo is just wonderful. It is a masterclass in stop motion animation and my favorite Like It Studios film to date. At number 13, I have Moana. My personal favorite of the Disney revival era. Moana just completely swept me away. Ready to see just how far we could go right there with Moana and the gang. First of all, let's get it out of the way. The animation is stellar. I mean, absolutely impeccable. Next level. The water animation in this film is probably the best water animation I've ever seen on any film ever. Especially when we get to part the ocean. Oh my gosh. But even the other textures, particularly Moana's hair is so amazing. And getting to see such a realistic depiction of non-white straight hair was just exciting. Plus, we get this female protagonist who doesn't have a love interest, who is slated to become the chief of her island and it's not even a question who still gets to be rebellious, who gets to find her own way, and in doing so, discover her own family heritage. It is a beautiful story that pushes so many envelopes and is so progressive without ever really shoving it into your face. Maui, what a wonderful character development he got. Even Hey Hey, the annoying little chicken who could have been unbearable as a side character, is really funny and all of the comedic beats just land. Plus Pua, forget about it. I love Pua still. A little bit salty he wasn't in the film more, but what you gonna do? But possibly one of the reasons this film rings so true with me is that relationship with Moana and her grandmother. When we get that I am Moana scene in the film, oh, it shook me to my core. The songs are wonderful. The animation is out of this world. The character development is top notch and the adventure is a whole lot of fun. I adore Moana. May not be for everyone, many may find it overrated, but it hit all the boxes for me. At number 12, I have How to Train Your Dragon 2. This is a series that definitely holds a special place in my heart and one I have long connected with. And I think this sequel had a lot to do with that because the first one was so revered and so loved that the sequel could have easily faltered, but instead lived up to that original. How to Train Your Dragon 2 brings in so many darker elements to the original story that it feels like a more sophisticated and grown take on these characters. Plus, we actually do age up our characters, which is a wonderful touch. Toothless's journey is a controversial and daring direction to go, but is once again handled so beautifully. And this film, in general, is daring and satisfying. The direction we go with Hiccup and his parents intriguing, and I felt it all worked really well. But the character gets to experience a lot of growth, and it all works really well within the context of both the predecessor and the sequel to come. The animation is on another level from that original film. The sequences are just stunning and beautiful. The dragons and the dragon designs in this film are amazing. And that bond between Toothless and Hiccup goes through trials and tribulations you wouldn't expect, but they come out all the stronger for it. It's one of those darker sequels that just works. And finally, number 11, oh, painstakingly, just barely missing my top 10, we have Finding Nemo. I have loved Finding Nemo so much ever since the first time I saw it back when I was a kid. And re-watching it, 
unlike a lot of other early Pixar projects, it really hasn't lost any of its animation luster all these years later. And I think that does have a lot to do with the fact that fish, by and large, have smooth surfaces and water and the flowiness of the water really helps animators. You don't have as many of those fine textures like you would with Monsters, Inc. But Nemo is just such a cute character. I have long found him to be maybe the cutest of all Pixar's characters. I love Nemo. But honestly, the story is about Marlin and about Dory and their connection and this father's love and dedication to his son. And that's such an important story to tell, one that we don't often see when it comes to animation. And it's done so well in this film. And the character work, honestly, is what really brings Finding Nemo to life, whether it be the fish in the tank or Marlin, Dory, and all of the characters they run into along the way. Dory is easily a character that could have been an annoying side character, but instead, with the vocal work from Ellen DeGeneres, she's brought to life in this really charming, heartfelt, and earnest way that this little fish was impossible not to love. The stakes were high, the hijinks were hilarious, the comedy in this film is still top tier for Pixar, and the adventure, this epic, epic journey is satisfactory from start to finish. Everything about Finding Nemo is pretty much perfect. So that was the latest installment in our countdown, number 20 to 11. What did you think of the films I included here on this segment of the countdown? Are you shocked to see any of these movies land this high or this low? Let me know your thoughts on all of these films in the comment section down below or of course you can hit me up on twitter and if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on my latest videos including the final top 10 in this countdown i love you all so much for your continued support Mwah! thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye